Hi there everyone. Another day, another unboxing. The second of three. Today we have the Pulsar Thermion XP50 top of the range thermal scope. Some beastie this. Some price tag, but some beastie if you can afford it. Kindly on loan from Blackwood Outdoors. Thank you very much, Ian. Links down below with all the information. And uh, let's see what you get for your buck. Another big beastie of a box this. Um, 43 centimeters by 10 by 15 and a half. Um, nice little magnetic flap. You know you're opening something serious. We have the quick start guide again. As with both of these, uh, these high spec Pulsar th products, you get the quick start guide, but there's no full manual here. The full manual is accessed via the Pulsar website. So I'll include a link down below in the description where you can download the manual. So we'll see what, you, what we get. Um, and first of all, handy carry case. Let's see. 1.75 kilos. Nice sturdy case with a shoulder strap. And it feels, feels lightly padded again. Right, so a bit like the, uh, the Pulsar Digex. Ah, right. Here we have, this one comes with a mount. Um, reach back in this case, or it could be reach forward. Um, and uh, I'll need to check with uh, Ian if, uh, if the mount is standard. I don't believe it is. Um, we have again, a rubberized focus ring. Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit stiffer this time, and uh, a rubberized, ridged uh, diopter adjustment. Again, a bit like the Digex um, N450, we've got a uh, rear button, blue for power, record for still and video, plus for zoom increments. Um, and again, I believe it's three increments, and then when you're zooming, you can twiddle a dial for um, fine-tuning the zoom. Digital zoom this is. Feels very well made, feels solid. Um, it's not a lightweight, no IR in this case of course. And that's 1.04 kilos, so just over a kilo. But it does, probably a kilo because this one's got a, a coaster on it. Okay, what else do you get in the box? We have a spare top turret cap ah the spare cap is taller and this will be for the larger replaceable battery we have a rubber eye cup particularly obviously useful for very bright or very dark environments. And, ah, yes, very nice touch that. It pulls on, pulls off. It's not gonna fall off accidentally, but there's a magnet clearly in the rim and uh, pops on with a click. Nice touch. So all compartmentalized again. There's a there's some padding in this case. There's compartments which are adjustable with Velcro. Um, charger for two batteries. I have to double check. I'll pop on screen somewhere how many batteries you get as standard. There's three external plug-in batteries in this pack and the unit itself has um, internal battery power. One great thing I've learned with the Pulsar Digex and the Thermion is at any point, if you're using a plug-in battery, um, a scope automatically um, detects and it'll it'll use the plug-in battery if you've got one uh, fitted. And when you take it out, it'll default to the onboard power supply, the onboard battery, and uh, it'll, no interruption to uh, service or recording during that, which is a nice touch. They put some thought into it. So I've got charger for two batteries, rubber eye cup, extended turret, three batteries, 
power supply, power UK power adapter with USB. So this will be, oh, small Allen key. Um, and this will be the, uh, yep, USB cable. So all very nice. Um, nicely padded case. Right, onto the main course. The scope itself, with a mount, one piece mount, it's a kilo, and it's 14, just a smidgen over 14 inches long, 36 centimeters. Um, doesn't feel too unwieldy, and that's with a, a one piece mount as well, which is quite impressive. Uh, nice and sturdy, these. You've got a slightly rubberized feel to it, and there's an o-ring in the seal so ah and there's only one way ah that's an extended battery so i'll use the extended all three batteries supplied are the same so i'll pop the extended eye cup on okay so uh, it stands out a fair bit, but if that gives you the extra battery life, fine by me. Before we get onto the specs, just wanted to put the Thermion XP50 through the same very rudimentary test. I uh, put the Digex N450 through um, a day or two ago when I did the unboxing for that. So scope's on. And I know I've got a fair sized nose. Um, so here we have rubber eye cup but it's slightly rubberized and uh, it was quite easy to um, get the, the doubt to write for my eye for focusing the uh, reticle and I'll go through all the reticles and colors and options and in due course I've got the um, scope again touching if you can just see that touching the bridge of my nose so less than two inches of eye relief just under two inches and I can see all four corners of the rectangular screen but straight away um, if you were if you had this at the sort of eye relief some of the photos some of the pulsar photos show um, you can see the central 50 percent of the of the image so about on screen if you imagine the reticle being the center you can see about that much so missing an awful lot of the view if you were to use this far enough away from the eye for it to be safe on a heavily recoiling rifle like a full bore rifle top left of the screen i can see a camera logo it says five hours 36 remaining so that'll be the 16 gig internal memory bottom it says two times base magnification is two there's a click it's um it's not shuttleless technology so there's a click as it recalibrates but it doesn't doesn't uh, freeze the image for long right when it freezes there's an audible click faint but audible and it freezes for a, a barely a second so that's not bad at all um, but you wouldn't want it to freeze while you're taking lining up a shot I wondered if a quick press of the power button would um, put the scope into standby as it does with the Digex but no a quick press of the on off button forces calibration so it does have a button to force calibration so that it doesn't pause just when you're lining up a shot. Two times, right, back to the two times mag. Okay, so there's four gross stages of magnification. Two, four, eight, and 16 mag. Um, and obviously I'm looking at, there's, there's like barely three meters of space here, so 16 mag's highly uh, grainy, but uh, not surprising. But first impressions are that this is gonna be very, very impressive. Um, out and about when I try it down at the harbour. It's great having a harbour within uh, half a mile. Obviously we're in isolation right now with thanks to CV19, but um, what I'm gonna do in a day or two is drive down to the harbour, stay in my car, basically I'm working from home, lean each of these, each of three scopes on the, the window of the car so that it's hopefully it's stable. Recording while going through the menu options, the different stadia, all the different functions, different colours of the reticles, picture in picture, everything okay I naturally want to see the whole view so I would want this with my nose just about touching 
just at the point where it touches my nose, it's a straight sided rectangle. Uh, very nice, but there's no way I would use this in a heavily recoiling rifle. The problem with the, the sort of bogus eye relief claims is um, when you see your photos of someone using it on a D rifle, they're holding it here um, and they're lining up a shot. Yes, you can see the crosshair. Um, yes, you can line that up with your prey or target or whatever. Um, insert as appropriate. Um, but you're missing what you, something in the foreground might appear or, or so, some uh, hazard might appear from either side, um, like an animal which is not prey, um, like a horse, for example, if you were out shooting vermin. Um, so I do have a slight problem when advertised eye relief is here and you actually want to be using it here, touching your nose. But um, I suppose that's uh, license being taken with the advertising. And I should, I should mention, just as per the... Um, as per the Digex N450, as well as the four steps of zoom, when you put it, you press one of them and you get it onto the zoom function. If you then turn the side wheel, right, it goes up in increments of 0.1. If you want to, you can start at 2.0 zoom, press the zoom, start to turn the dial and go up in increments of 0.1 all the way up to 16. Um, if you've got the time. And a few presses of the... Uh, the main zoom button takes you straight back to um, 2, 4, 8 and 16 zoom. Okay, just looking through the, uh, the longer menu, which is a long press of the side and then using, rotating the wheel and then a press of the, uh, the center pip. Uh, by the way, this doesn't, you don't feel any, any movement. You don't feel a little, even a slight click. It just, you press it and it, software responds, but you don't feel that there's anything being pressed. Feeling how stiff the the objective lens focus uh, ring is, that explains why someone's put a coaster on to make it just a little bit easier to think more finger friendly to uh, adjust the focus because um, that is that is very very stiff focus ring. Okay, I just did some timing for you. The auto calibration only freezes the image for about a second. That happens every sixty seconds. Um, you can. If you've got it selected as an option, you can press the power button briefly to force calibration. And also, something else I've noticed is as the one minute calibration is rolling around, three seconds before it happens, you see a small countdown timer, three, two, one, and then there's a zero and then there's a calibration click that freezes. So it does warn you that the calibration's coming up. If you've got your eye and the bottom shaded slightly the very narrow shaded um, border at the bottom it'll count down three two one in that border and one other thing again the right hand turret left turret is the zoom and the control the upper turret houses the removable battery and the right turret houses the usb connection for downloading charging the internal battery feels like an amazing quality piece of kit very very nice at that price, at this price point, so it should. I don't think I would be disappointed at all if I paid, if I could afford one of these and if I bought one. It does what it says on the tin. Thank you very much to Ian Blackwood of Blackwood Outdoors for the loan of both the um, Pulsar Digex N450 and the Pulsar Thermion XP50 for Bruce and I to do our independent, honest review. Thanks again to Bruce for his comparison footage when he was out doing land protection duties um, a few nights ago. Very nice to get the opportunity to um, test such kit. Don't forget to keep an eye on the Night Vision Forum for all the latest. Links to that are down below. Lots more coming soon. Thanks very much for watching.